Here on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report, I'm Amy Goodman, as we return now to my recent conversation with former Brazilian President Dilma Rousseff, recorded in April. Madam President, I wanted to ask your thoughts today. You were in the United States this week when the U.S. dropped the largest bomb in the history of the world. The Pentagon calls it the mother of all bombs, a massive ordnance air bomb on Afghanistan, the largest bomb in the history of the world since the atomic bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. This followed last week's bombing of Syria and the continued U.S. back bombing in Yemen. Your thoughts? Eu quero te dizer que, em que pese eu não ser presidente da República, eu vou dizer o que eu quero dizer. Agora, eu não sou presidente da República, mas eu vou dizer o que nós teríamos dito presidente, sem qualquer sombra de dúvida. Nós estamos contra esse tipo de ação. Por quê? First, I don't think it resolves the problem of ISIS. Why do I think that this kind of repression isn't the appropriate approach? What I've read in the United States newspapers is that oftentimes, when bombing Syria or Afghanistan, well, I know there is no dialogue with ISIS. With ISIS, it's a different kind of relationship. But what has happened is that when bombing civilians and allies are killed, so I ask myself, what's the point of such an action if it's going to kill civilians and allies? What might someone think who's living in Syria or anywhere and all of a sudden a bomb is dropped? I think it's extremely dangerous because those groups don't gauge consequences. It's a very radical policy. So I am extremely concerned about the reaction afterwards, that is to say, I don't believe that there is any circumstance in which we can come up with some easy answer. When the war was taken to Iraq, when the war was taken to Afghanistan, when there was a bombing done in Syria, it's very difficult. And this unleashes the whole process of such violence that the consequences are uncontrollable. How long has it been that they've been fighting in Syria and they're not able to stop ISIS? How long has al-Nusra and al-Qaeda continued doing what they're doing. So I think we need to ask about this. And I'm very concerned when civilians and allies are the ones who are killed. That's what it says in today's newspaper. So I don't think that such bombardments produce results, and I'm not in favor of dropping bombs when they kill civilians and allies, because it's just putting more fuel on the fire. The bomb was developed during the Bush years. Um, he didn't use it, uh, George W. Bush in Iraq. Um, President Obama didn't use it. Within two months of the Trump presidency, they have engaged in this historic act, the largest bomb in the history of the world outside an atomic bomb. Your assessment of the Trump administration, of President Donald Trump? Olha, eu não faço. I don't evaluate the performance of presidents of other countries because I'm a former president, so I don't talk about that. Obviously, I have an assessment, but I don't think it's appropriate for me to talk about it. I can talk about positive accomplishments, but otherwise, I won't say anything. Mas se não é sobre acertos, eu não falo. What do you feel has been done right? I don't have anything to say. Well, I'm not going to talk about that. My assessment of the Trump administration is something I'm not going to talk about. It's not up to me to do that. That's your job. I wanted to end by sharing a clip of Noam Chomsky with you, the world-renowned dissident uh, linguist who recently appeared on Democracy Now! and talked about Brazil. It's just enormous corruption. Oh, it's just uh, uh, it, 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 it's, uh, painful to see the Workers' Party in Brazil, uh, which did carry out significant measures. Uh, just They just couldn't keep their hands out of the till. Uh, they joined the extremely corrupt elite, which is robbing all the time, and took part in it as well, and discredited themselves. And there's a reaction. 
I, I don't think the game is over by any means. There were real successes achieved, and uh, I think a lot of those will be sustained, but there is a regression they'll have to pick up again with, uh, one hopes, more uh, 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 honest uh, forces that won't be, that will, first of all, uh, recognize the need to develop the economy in a way which has a solid foundation, not just based on raw material exports, and secondly, uh, uh, honest enough to carry out uh, decent programs without uh, robbing the public at the same time. So that was Noam Chomsky, who said um, there was just enormous corruption. He said, painful to see the Workers' Party in Brazil, which did carry out significant measures, but they just couldn't keep their hands out of the till. The first thing I want to say is the following. I want to put some things in perspective. The greatest corruption in recent years occurred with the subprime crisis. Now, I don't know that as a result of the subprime crisis, I don't believe that all of the companies that were involved in corruption were destroyed. Maybe their CEOs or others who committed corruption had to answer for it, but they didn't destroy the institution. Rather, they took the person who committed the crime. The company is not a thinking and speaking entity. The company is all of its compounds together. Now, unless the entire it's corrupt in its entirety, then you don't destroy the organization. So why do I say this? Well, First, to say that Brazil has the greatest corruption in recent years. Brazil's corruption is significant. It matters to Brazil. It has to be fought. Later, I can tell you about what my government did, but I don't think that it has to that the party has to be destroyed. I don't believe that banks were destroyed or agencies were destroyed or that persons who were not involved were persecuted. Same thing applies to a political party, because the political party as an institution, well, some say it's different from a company, but I don't believe that one should criminalize the Workers' Party. One should criminalize and prosecute the individual members of the party who committed crimes. But one should not combat the entire Workers' Party in Brazil, which is the largest party in Brazil, without a doubt. No. ...de combate político que ocorre no Brasil. Não venham combater todo o Partido dos Trabalhadores, que é, sem sombra de dúvida, ainda o maior partido do Brasil. And I'm sorry to get so excited, but I want to explain the following. I think it's fundamental in Brazil to fight corruption. I think it's fundamental, because corruption in Brazil is a way in which economic power interferes with political power. And one of the processes in this corruption is characterized by the fact that in Brazil, before, even though it's spelled out in the law, those who come to corrupt public officials have never been prosecuted. In 2013, for example, there was a law on crime-fighting going organizations that we sent to Congress, and two measures had been taken. When all parties of opposition in Brazil, that were so the one who made the mistake should pay for it. The law exists. It should be properly applied. The Workers' Party will answer for its mistakes. It has to, but not by putting an end to the party. Punish the individuals who committed the crime, but not the party. This whole story of punishing the whole party dates back to 1946, when all opposition parties in Brazil that had well, the more radical opposition, the Communist Party, Brazilian Socialist Party, were made illegal. I don't agree with that whole process. I don't agree with destroying companies. I'd never seen a single bank or company destroyed. I saw CEOs have to answer. Now, what I find extremely unusual is that they take Petrobras, the state oil company, and make it, paint it as being corrupt 
corrupt per se. There are many people in Petrobras who are corrupted and who are accused of corruption. So I think it's very clear the one who corrupted, the one who was corrupted, should be prosecuted with the right to defense without spectacular media treatment. Because what's happening in Brazil is that the media places people on trial before the case even goes into the courts. Now, I don't think that in any democracy in the world, as far as I know, the media can take the place of the judiciary. I don't believe the media guarantee the right to defense. It plays a fundamental role in democracy. Now, the role of meeting out justice has to be performed by those who have an institutional mandate to do so. O mandato institucional do julgamento. Finally, President Rousseff, in the 1960s, you were involved with the underground resistance to oppose dictatorship. Are you seeing a right wing shift in Latin America and the United States? And what form do you think that resistance should take today? É diferente. Today, it's difficult. I believe that our resistance today, and this is a major gain for us in Latin America, today we can resist without having to go into the underground, without rather using the most important weapon of democracy, which is the word discussion, debate. We can do that today. Before, we couldn't before we were somehow shackled by the dictatorship. Today, our resistance and the resistance in the United States is the same. That is to say, I think we are all going through the following process. There is an increase in financialization instead of the financial industry serving productive industry and productive services and all activities. The financial sector became the master on becoming the master. It channels to itself the largest part of income, and this produces inequality, stagnation, precarious employment, and co-optation by some of the press, which means that shareholders, CEOs, all of management are the models who are above and beyond the workers, the consumers, and so forth. In other words, it creates a world which is not going to bring well-being and affluence for the population as a whole. We're all going through that neoliberalism, financialization, greater inequality, and more and more exceptional type measures here in the United States as well. The Patriot Act, in a way, was an exceptional act because when you put persons on trial without guarantees, then, well, that's an exception type of act. This happens in Brazil with several measures. For example, a court has said that I can suspend the Constitution because the car wash scandal is an exceptional event, and therefore we can suspend the law. But that's not possible. We have, in a way, a mitigated democracy that we have to expand. We are experiencing a time of greater inequality and financialization, in a way, taking stock of the history of our experiences, of our movements. We have a lot, all of us who defend democracy, have a lot to share with one another. Ousted Brazilian President Dilma Rousseff. If you'd like a copy of today's show, you can go to our website at democracynow.org. Tune in Monday, Memorial Day, when we'll spend the hour with world-renowned linguist and dissident Noam Chomsky. Democracy Now! is produced by Mike Burke, Dina Guzder, Nermin Shea, Carla Wills, Laura Goddess, Diener, Sam Alkoff, John Hamilton, Robbie Karen, Hani Masood, Trina Ndura, and Andre Lewis. Special thanks to Becca Staley and Julie Crosby. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks for joining us.